Birdbrain, and today we are talking about particles and capture motion. I don't know which categories it falls into now. Hmm. So basically, I made a tutorial about the capture motion tool. And it's very fun. It's a tool that allows you to kind of draw a path with your stylus or your mouse and have something follow that path. So if you don't know what that is, please go check that video because I'm not going to explain to you how to use the capture motion. I'm going to show you several ways that you can make use of it. So here I have a very basic system, trail particles. It's You can find it in the node library. Um, yeah, this one. So trail particles. And I'm going to use that with the capture motion node. So if you do that, it's going to allow you to have a very cool effect like this. So if I don't move my effect, it just stays in place. But if I move it, I will get this cool effect. So how do I do that? It doesn't work with all systems, right? It's something that you must think about. But if you have a system that has a particle emitter that you can move, such as the trail particle, you can do some very cool things. So into the particle system, uh, you have lots of nodes. If you don't know what these are, I have a whole series on particle systems. So go check that out. I'm going to post it into the description. But basically what you want to find is your sprite emitter will usually have a region. And this is what creates the particle, right? And that region is able to receive a peg. So that peg, typically we would move it ourselves, like in the keyframes and whatnot. But now if you use that peg that is connected to the planner region, it's going to allow you to move your emitter. So that little thing here that I have is my emitter. And if I take the peg to move it uh, with my transform tool, you know, it changes the origin of where my particles are created from. So if I take that path peg and I use it with my capture motion tool, it means that I can go into like my timeline here. And if I get my capture on, then I can just uh, trace any kind of like path that I want. And I can use this to move my particle system. So I'm um, just going to click elsewhere to get rid of that view and then click on the hide control to hide, you know, my controls and we can watch what it did. So, you know, there's a lot of possibilities of things you can do with that. So yes, you can use it on a planner region to move your particles and um, a couple of good particle system to use that with. If you go to your node library into the particle section, you're going to find others. So particles, um, you can use that for the fire node like this, get it to go here. Sometimes your particle system have a peg on top. Sometimes it's useful to keep it aligned, but for some others, it might not be useful. Like so for trail particles, I know I got rid of it because I didn't need it. Uh, always be careful because if I take, for example, my fire here and I move the top peg with the capture motion, it's going to give me a weird effect where like it's not going to be logical uh, because instead of moving the emitter, like the place where my particle come from, I'm moving my whole particle system. So it gives me this kind of cheap thing that works for some occasion, but sometimes that's not what you want. You would rather want the fire to be a bit more dynamic, which is why instead of moving the top peg uh, that is often used to resize your whole thing, you might want to use uh, your sprite emitter. So I'm going to use that here. I'm going to go on my first frame, get my capture motion active, and I'm going to draw a little path here to get my fire to follow it. So you see, only my sprite emitter now is changing. And the way to use it with the fire particle that I like is that instead of giving it a crazy, crazy wiggle way, what you can do is you kind of have your fire wiggle like this. So you can just like um, draw kind of a wiggly shape here. And this will allow you to give some kind of life to a fire. Yeah, so these were two uh, different ways you can use the capture motion. So you can either do a trail like we did for the trail particle here. Woo. Or you can use it to create more like idle animation, such as what you would have for this fire animation where we had it kind of wiggle at the center. Uh, there's so many ways for you to use that uh, node. So I hope you're going to try it and let me know how it went. So with that, have a nice day.